Good evening. You're listening to Art Speak Radio, a 30-minute live program about the thriving visual and literary arts community in Kansas City. I'm Blair Shulman with Maria Vasquez Boyd, who is on assignment in our nation's capital this week. Together, we bring you information about what's happening in the arts community, events you should know about, and interviews with local artists and writers. The Artists for Life Project is a collaboration of artists creating posters that speak to different audiences to address handgun violence in the Kansas City area. The Artists for Life Project is funded by a 2014 rocket grant administered by the Charlotte Street Foundation and the Spencer Museum of Art. And my guest this evening is Daryl Chamberlain, a Kansas City artist himself and project director of the Artists for Life Project. Daryl, welcome to Art Speak Radio. Thank you, Blair. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to have you back. Uh, when you were here last here, about eight months ago, the project was just ramping up, and now that it's fully underway, tell us what's been happening. Well, as you see, uh, the art has come to fruition. It has, and I want you to know that in the studio we are surrounded by lots of incredible artwork by a variety of artists that we're going to be talking about. So tell us how all this came from the first idea to what we see before us in the studio. The first idea came about with the murder of Hadia Pendleton in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And that's what got me thinking, what's going wrong here? Here we have a teenager who goes to the White House to perform for the President of the United States, mm -hmm. which is the highest height for her. And then she comes home within two weeks later, she's murdered by an angry gunman who had fired at the wrong person. And, and, it, was, and it was this incident, among many others, that caused you to, to begin this, this campaign. First, uh, while our listeners perhaps can get on, who are near a computer, can get online, what is the address, the web address, for the Artists for Life project so they can kind of look at some of the artwork that's there already? Yeah, the web address is www artistsforlifeproject.com okay that's artistsforlifeproject.com so from this first incident and many others you decided did you who did you collaborate with or is this something that you went with on your own or how, tell me how this came. no uh, i'm a part of a Kansas City collaboration of artists called the light in the other room that's right. And I first approached them with the idea. And this is uh, kind of a coincidence of things, or, or the moon was in the seventh house and Jupiter <laughs> aligned with Mars. I dig it. <laughs> and that I was pressing with the Hadia murder, mm -hmm. and then at the same time, Julia Cole from the Charlotte Street Foundation came to us and did a presentation on the rocket grant. And I started saying, uh -huh, is it possible to take the rocket grant uh, offering and merge it with this idea that's pressing on my heart mm -hmm. and so it's two things that just happen at the same time good and, good. and in that I, I decided to apply for that grant and I discussed it with the artists and some liked the idea and some needed to warm up to it well and, what, tell uh, us about uh, what you envisioned for this project because this isn't this is i wouldn't say this is a psa it's more mm -hmm. of a campaign to get people involved it's, Would a, you agree it's with? a yes it's a campaign initially i think the idea of the posters came really early mm -hmm. and then as the artists began to discuss it and debate and throw in the pros and cons mm -hmm. that's when it became began to gel and became what it is today. And, and what it is, um, we have some 16, 17, I think I make 17 artists mm -hmm. who are making posters that are going to go up around the Kansas City area. Are these artists, are they local? Are they national, regional? Where, where are you pulling, where did you find they're, them? They're local and national. Um, I, there are some that I've known of nationally, mm -hmm. and whereas I love their work, and in the case of uh, this picture here by artist Dion J, mm -hmm. who lives in uh, Maryland, the Baltimore, Maryland area, and I was really intrigued by his social work. Right. And, and so that I contacted him and told him what we were doing and that we're making posters that address handgun violence in the Kansas City area. And, how and he respond? got excited immediately. Good. He said, that sounds like something I want to be into. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Tell us, there are some pretty sobering statistics about handgun violence in, in Kansas City that I think a lot of our listeners may not know about, but you were telling me earlier. Why don't you uh, reiterate, reiterate Yes, Yes, uh, when we talk about handgun violence, if we just start that conversation, we got a room, say, of some 20 people. Mm-hmm. The first thing that comes to mind is Chicago. Because right. that's what you hear all the time. But what most Kansas Cityans do not know is that the murder rate in Kansas City is 1.5 times worse than Chicago. Mm-hmm. We are murdering people at a faster rate than Chicago is when we look at the murder rate per 100,000 persons. Mm-hmm. So what do you think mm-hmm. needs... Because this is such an enormous problem that has secondary and tertiary effects to everybody, we were talking before we came on the air that if someone is killed by a handgun or an, any violent crime, it's not only the the victim themselves, but the people who knew the victim. So now the statistic of 1.5 times higher than Chicago can be 10 times, 20 times mm-hmm. higher. Now we're talking mm-hmm. about... Thousands and thousands of people who are affected by handgun violence. This is where it really gets amazing when we look at the the mathematical data of it. When we talk about the murder rate per the population of Kansas City of 469,000, we come to a number of 23.1 for the year uh, 2013, Mm -hmm. where Chicago was 15. And then... If we focus in just the zip codes where that mur- where those murders are occurring, mm-hmm. then that number becomes astronomical to where it goes from 23.1 to 280 for young men age 15, 14 to 24, 333 for older men age uh, 25 to 35, right. and some uh, somewhere in the 200s. Uh, for older men aged 35 to 45. So, you, and so those numbers seem, I, I thought, were just just the other way around. I, when you told me those numbers earlier, I was really surprised. No, uh, the murder rate for the older men is higher than that of the younger people. See, we watch the Channel 9 news, uh, uh, evening news and mm-hmm. such, and the first thing comes to mind is it's the kids, it's the kids, because that's what they sell us. But when we really look at the data, mm-hmm. the older men are, are creating their share of problems, and it looks like they may be creating almost two-thirds of the problem. Why do you think that is? What's your opinion on that? Um I wonder sometimes, is there a correlation with unemployment in Kansas City, particularly unemployment in the black community, which is not uh, at an equitable level or an appreciable level when we compare it to unemployment in the white community? Men are stressed out. They're angry, and they're trying to solve their problems with anger. You come home, your gas is cut off, and, and it's cold in there, and you're mad. You leave there, and you go over there somewhere and something starts and you've got all this anger pent up. Um, If we can get more people to work, we might see something change where less people will be solving their problems with anger and stress. And this is what your campaign is intending to do, is to draw the community that could, instead of suffering from this issue, they have an opportunity to really take back what could be a bigger right. problem and turn it around and say this does not have to be a problem. It does not have uh, we to We were be. saying earlier that when someone is anger, and most often, and I don't know the statistics on this, but when someone is murdered with a handgun, because it's so readily available, mm-hmm. it's done in the heat of the moment. And Many times, yes. Yeah, and there's a split second where the anger flashes and their first reaction is to engage in violence. Whereas if there are people in the community, if there's someone with you who can say, now hold on a minute, let's just pull back, come with me to the corner, let's talk for a minute. I think if there is another person who's just willing to listen to you for just a minute to let you vent and get it mm-hmm. out of your system, you might think twice, you might not want to go to that hand. Right, and that's what we're hoping these posters will do is make people think, make people mm-hmm. discuss and converse. And as we talk about it more...